Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. Now, like the CEO from SendGrid said on the last episode, one of the things I love about the World Cup this year is that we have one sport that is bringing the world together. Because there are plenty of things that divide us, but maybe we should focus on what unites us. And as you all know, I'm passionate about how tech is bringing us all closer together too. Now, no matter where you're listening to this show in the world, the reality is that we all need to be increasingly vigilant wherever we are especially if we're part of large crowds at concerts, sporting events, etc., in arenas and stadiums. It seems to me that on one side of the coin, we're using tech to create better experiences using technology, but on the other side, there are much longer lines and delays because of necessary security checks to keep people safe, but that can sometimes harm the experience. Now, I recently read about a company called Evolve, and they're doing security differently and believe that a superior visitor experience and security do not need to be mutually exclusive. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Boston so we can speak with Evolve Technology CEO Mike Allenbogen. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Mike. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. My name is Mike Ellenbogen. I'm CEO of Evolve Technology. Evolve is a new company in the physical security space. I've been doing physical security, meaning x-ray systems, the types of things that you've seen in the airports to look at baggage and screen people for the last 20 plus years. And Evolve is my third startup in, uh, in this industry. I mean, unfortunately, we are living in a time now where any large public gathering, such as a music concert, festival, sport and event, can be a target for the bad guys. And this is something that the global community all over the world face in every city. But what put you guys on my radar was when you said adversaries are growing increasingly more innovative and security technology isn't keeping up with those threats. So at a time where we should be focused on detecting explosives and firearms... Old technology is still detecting pocket knives, car keys and cell phones. So as those lines form and crowds gather, the burden of security inefficiencies is becoming more and more evident and it's never been more clearer that we need a better solution. So can you just help set the scene a little bit? Tell me more about Evolve Tech and how you're approaching security completely differently. Absolutely. And Neil, you hit the the nail on the head. We're trying to use technology that really hasn't changed a lot in the last 50 plus years to address a modern threat. And we used to worry about just things like protecting aircraft or high security government buildings um, or you know military facilities. And the threat has shifted from you know, hijackings to obviously plane attacks or explosions and then using the aircraft itself as a as a weapon to as shifted to, as you put it, soft targets, um, crowded places. And, you know, we've seen this really sea change over the last five years or so with the rise of of Al Qaeda and ISIS, um, as well as the active shooter events that we see here in the U.S., And we're trying to use technology that has been developed for applications like aviation security, where you're really trying to keep virtually any potential weapon um, off of an airplane uh, and very, very small amounts of explosives that can be a threat to an aircraft, which is a pressurized aluminum tube flying at 30,000 feet, um, where you you don't need necessarily a lot to have an impact on on an airplane. It's different when you're trying to protect a crowd, um, if you're trying to protect a venue. And we're trying to use old tech that needs to be updated, needs to recognize that today it's about balance. Um, We wanna find the threats to the crowd, the threats to the venue, we wanna find firearms, we need to find explosives. Um, No one better than, um, you know, the folks in the UK understand the impact uh, that explosives can have on a crowd um, after the you know Manchester attacks uh, and what we saw happen in Brussels in Paris, um, we evolved. We started the company 
in order to really rethink physical security and recognize the need for systems that that create this balance of identifying those threats to the crowd in the venue, but a, enabling a flow of people um, to be able to quickly enter because we've been trained to show up at the airport an hour ahead of time and stand in that line. Um, people aren't used to that when they're going to a stadium to see a football match or when they're going to um, someplace to see a concert. Uh, we need systems that can assure a safe environment without creating another bottleneck, another hassle, you know, another need to dump your pockets out. So that's, that's the kind of technology that Evolve is developing. It's a walkthrough system that can look for those threats to the venue without requiring everybody to slow down and empty out in, um, their pockets. And uh, you can walk through with the bag that you're normally carrying and basically just walk through. And it gives you a red light, green light response so the guards can quickly and easily resolve any alerts that might happen, but let those, you know, the 99% the of the people through that you just want to be able to go in and enjoy whatever they're there to see in the first place. Now, like you said, there was an attack here in Manchester in the UK, which was particularly horrifying because they, ta they targeted crowds that were leaving the arena and leaving that secured area. So where do you begin to protect people from attacks like that and then provide that protection beyond the walls of the building? It's a great question. Um, obviously, you can't protect everybody, every place that we all go. Yeah. But, you know, there are certain areas where we expect a level of safety and security. Um, Evolve has developed our, our first product that, that stands essentially at the front door um, to ensure that anybody walking in is not carrying a, a potential threat to that venue or to the crowd. But our next generation system will start to push that perimeter out um, so that you can ensure that even out where the Manchester attack occurred, um, you can start to identify somebody who might present a threat, alert the guards that they can then interdict or whatever their local protocols might be. But it's about creating concentric rings of security. Um, there's a need to rethink how we approach this, um, this challenge. And what we're trying to do is develop the appropriate sensors and tie them into the existing systems that a stadium might have, like their CCTV, um, that lets them identify somebody who may present a threat, clear that quickly and easily as far out as whatever they consider to be their outer perimeter. Now, many venues now are all under increasing pressure to wow their audiences with superior experiences. But can you tell me why a superior visitor experience and security don't necessarily need to be mutually exclusive? Absolutely. Um, so we, we all have walked through the um, metal detectors going into a stadium. So you stop, you take um, your cell phone, your keys, your wallet, and any other th objects you might have on you, you put them in the little white bowl. Um, you then walk through the metal detector. You pick it up on the other side. Uh, you're spending minutes, if not tens of minutes, in that line before you can get into the stadium. The people that we're working with, our customers, recognize, well, you might have to get onto an airplane. You don't necessarily have to go to a football game. Um, they're competing with the, the home experience now, and they want fans to enjoy the experience from the moment they set foot on that property. So anything that avoids the need to wait, that creates delays, that feels obtrusive, takes away from that experience. And they value, meaning the security professionals that we work with, value the fact that, again, we're identifying the threats that they're concerned about, but not requiring their guests, their visitors to completely, you know, to slow down their process. They can get inside quickly and easily. They can, they can go grab a beer. They can, you know, get popcorn for the kids. Uh, they can spend more money inside that stadium more quickly, which of course is part of the reason that they're there to begin with and just make that an enjoyable experience from get, from the get go.
So in your opinion there, what are the key elements that make up that effective physical security plan? So there's technology that's been developed that you know we're all carrying incredibly capable computers in our pockets now. There's sensors that have been developed for um, a lot of different applications from cell phones to the Internet of Things. When we started the company, we wanted to take advantage of a lot of that new capability, um, networking, cloud computing. And what we found is it really is a combination of smarter sensors, meaning hard hardware technology that can perform the detection of the threats of interest and smarter meaning seamless you know that can do it at the pace of life at the at the speeds that no, people normally normally walk we're also combining that with biometrics so we can use face recognition to identify somebody who's walking through the system who might be on the vip list or might be on a watch list um, and use that to, again, alert the authorities. It doesn't help the, pr- the people who are protecting the stadium to find out after the fact that the attacker was known to the authorities. How do we get that information out to the front line so that they can prevent the event from happening in the first place rather than reacting to it after the fact? So that combination of smart sensors, biometrics, and identity enable us to do that. And it's all coming together using AI, or as I prefer to call it, machine learning, um, to fuse that information to make smarter decisions. So can you tell me more about embracing the risk management strategy? And by doing that, venues can actually focus those most rigorous screening on the 1% rather than the 99% of people that are lining up to get in. Uh, yes. The So I think that you, you've captured the reality of it, you know, the... 99.99% of the people who arrive at, you know, at, at any kind of venue are, they're, they're, they're good people. They, they're coming there to enjoy whatever it is, you know, to enjoy the show. Um, how do you move those people through the process quickly and easily without slowing everybody down and without creating that additional bottleneck and really try to focus on those few people who possibly present more of a, of a concern or more of a threat. Um, so that's really where a risk-based approach comes in. The more I know about you, this, so if you fly in the U S, um, there's a program called TSA pre-check and that's based on information that a traveler provides to TSA background information. Um, so the more TSA knows about you, the less time they want to spend, um, inspecting you before you get onto that plane. They're still going to put you through a certain level of screening, but it might not be quite as rigorous as somebody they don't know. So we're taking that exact same approach to providing a risk-based process for the kinds of venues that we're talking about. How, how do we identify for the security professionals, those few people they might be interested in while screening everybody to an acceptable level um, and do that automatically and do it quickly so the system can really slave its sensitivity up and down depending on who's coming through. If you've got a premium seat entrance, you've got um, visitors who've been season ticket holders for the last 15 years and have never caused a problem, well, you might want to treat them a little bit differently than somebody that you don't know or somebody who might be on the local police watch list. And we enable that by combining identity plus detection. So just to help anyone listening visualize and understand the incredible difference that you're making with this technology, can you tell me about the role that Evolve played in improving overall security and customer experience at the Gillette Stadium over there in the US? Yeah, so we've enjoyed a very close working relationship with Gillette Stadium, which as a Massachusetts or Boston native, uh, I'm proud of as home of the New England Patriots. Um, we are working with Gillette to embrace this risk-based screening approach. We have systems that have been deployed at the stadium. We're also, as I mentioned earlier, working on um, technology that can be used at in those concentric rings around the stadium. And Gillette is a close working partner with us to develop and then test and deploy that technology. They're very forward thinking, very forward leaning. Um, A gentleman named Mark Briggs, who's been leading that charge, actually 
is uh, a Brit who spends his time over here now. Um, but Mark and Mark has helped to us to understand the needs of sort of stadium security, how we can best meet their um, specific applications, how our technology can grow to address their concerns in a way, again, that creates this seamless flow and seamless environment. So we're working today at their um, club and suite entrances. So they're premium customers. Those are also the entrances that are used on non-game day by employees. So we're doing employee screening and visitor screening as well. And we can utilize the techniques that we've already talked about in terms of identity and face recognition um, to enhance that whole process for all of those different stakeholders. You are involved with a lot of high-profile clients. I mean, you mentioned the Gillette Stadium, home of New England Patriots there. But I also recently read uh, the Port Authority Police were conducting tests of Evolve Edge high-tech body scanner at the World Trade Center uh, um, Path Station. Can you tell me more about that? As a security technology provider, we're, we're very careful about how much we discuss yeah. about our, our customers' applications and, and use cases. Um, so in the event of, in the case of the Port Authority, they tested the edge system at the Oculus, which is where the trains come in from various uh, areas around the city. Um, as they look at technologies that they can deploy to create a safe environment within their system. And we worked with them quite closely, um, both in their lab, testing and evaluating the system, as well as in, um, in the Oculus, uh, and that will continue in other locations to see how the edge system can, can really best meet their needs to screen a lot of people. If you imagine the flow going in and out of New York City on a daily basis, screen a lot of people very quickly um, and unobtrusively as they're trying to get on their train and head home or get on their train and come into work. So what's next for Evolve? Is there anything else that you can share with us today? So every day we're working on making the system operate better for our customers. That means do a better and better job of detecting the threats of interest, making sure that we're staying ahead of the curve, staying ahead of the adversary. We publish a, a daily intelligence brief called The Scan, and you're welcome to sign up for The Scan at evolvetechnology.com. We're, as I already mentioned, developing capability that helps to push that perimeter out and work with our users, our customers, and their partners on creating complete solutions that aren't just about kind of a box that you drop in, but actually start to connect up different silos of information to make it as easy as possible for the security professionals to, you know, to do their job, to do it well, create a safe environment, and create a better visitor experience from throughout the entire process. So if we do have anyone listening that is managing security or running a large venue anywhere in the world and facing these similar challenges, can you remind the listeners of where they can find you guys online and also contact a member of your team if they have any questions or just want to start a conversation with you guys? Sure. So you can find us at evolvetechnology.com and evolve without the E on the end. So E-V-O-L-V technology.com. Um, and there's a contact us tab on the website that you can use and um, I would like to say we'll be very responsive and get back to you right away. Fantastic. I think it's so important the work that you're doing here. Everybody loves to go out and see sporting events, see music concerts and not be worried about these threats that we see on the news on a daily basis now. So the fact that you're detecting threats and detecting uh, adversaries and constantly working on that is a fantastic thing. So a big thank you for coming on the show today. I, I appreciate your time and your interest. Thank you very much. There were so many big talking points from today's episode there about what needs to be done to keep patrons safe by providing protection both inside and beyond the walls of any building. And how by embracing a risk management strategy, venues can focus their most rigorous screening on the 1% rather than the 99%. 
But most enlightening of all is the fact that a superior visitor experience and security do not need to be mutually exclusive. But what are your thoughts on this? This is something that we all encounter wherever we're located in the world. And I'm interested in your thoughts, your insights, and the different approaches that you've seen at these large venues that we frequent. So as always, email me at techblogwriter at outlook.com or tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. I record these podcasts in a room on my own, just me talking into a microphone. So I love getting that feedback from you. And most importantly, making sure you get involved in this conversation. It's not just about me and the guests spoon feeding you our conversations. I want to hear yours too. But I also appreciate you're incredibly busy. You're being bombarded with content. And I'm just grateful you took the time to spend a few moments with me again today. And I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.